and I'm just watching it go up. It went from 500 to 1,000. It went from 1,000 to 2,000. 2,000 to 4,000. I'm like, wow, should I close it? Or like, I think it's gonna go higher, so let me just wait it out and see. Went 4,000 to 6,000. 6,000 to 8,000. 8,000 to 10,000. Most normal people who went from $500 would have closed it off from since they got $1,000. Welcome back to my Naturally Vincy family. Glad to have you back for another Friday, for another Financial Friday. If you're new here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. You give us a big thumbs up and also make sure that you share this video with your friends. Uh, it greatly helps us out and we do appreciate each and every one of you. So today I just wanted to talk to you guys about my personal financial story or journey. Um, I normally 23 turning 24, but I wanted to just let you guys know um, my story because I've gone through a lot, I've done a lot in terms of my finances, and I just hope that my story will help others out there um, in terms of their journey or just encouraging that you can get back on the right track. So. Um, I think my financial journey started when I was younger. As you've seen in the last video, um, I've always been interested in business. I've been in in interested in uh, stocks um, and investing, even though I didn't really have any knowledge as to how to go about it. Um, especially stocks, I was really interested in it at a really young age. I used to always research, um, I think when I was in high school, how to invest in the stock, stock market, where can you invest in the stock market. And I think I've seen that you can only invest in it through the bank. I think back then there was a lot less apps where you can trade it at your own leisure. Um, so I never really went through with it. Um, I think the most that I did was open a TFSA uh, bank account. So that's a tax-free savings account in Canada and you can trade you can um, get mutual funds through that but the bank picks that for you you don't pick those stocks for yourself so I opened one of those and I used to watch it grow every single day it would grow by like 10 cents then it go back down then it go negative 10 cents and because you know back then I didn't really put any money into it maybe like a hundred two hundred three hundred dollars I put into it but I would just watch it and then finally, I turned 18 years old. Um, I didn't know anything about credit cards at all. I remember when I went to the bank, I went to go open a new bank account because the bank that I was with, I didn't like it just based off of when they were open. They were always open nine to five, Monday to Friday, but I would mainly do my banking on the weekends because that's when I would be free. So I went to go open with a new bank account and when I went to go open that bank account, uh, they introduced me to credit cards and they asked me if I wanted to get a credit card, but I had no idea what a credit card was, how credit cards work, um, and it, I just knew that like I was always getting told credit cards are bad uh, and they mess up your life and all of that stuff but I didn't really understand it so I ended up calling my sister and asking her should I get a credit card and she's like yeah get the credit card but be careful I'm like okay I'll be careful so I got the credit card when I turned 18 I was doing really good um, I would pay something on it and I would just pay it off right away I would buy something pay it off right away and I had this whole system going. I'm like, they're not catching one cent of interest from me. They're, they're not gonna get any money from me. I'm gonna use them and I'm gonna get all the points and they're gonna pay me back money. So I did accumulate some points. I think I was able to withdraw about $50 from the points, which is nothing compared to how much money I actually spent on my credit card. And then um, as I got a bit older, um, I got introduced to something called Forex or foreign exchange. Um, so, uh, the way how I got introduced into it was um, someone was doing like an MLM, so multi-level marketing uh, for foreign exchange. So that's where you have to pay money to join the business and then you would recruit people, but at the same time you're trading. So I'm like, this is amazing because you can make money from recruiting people as well as you can make money from trading and foreign exchange seems like so, it's so great and stuff like that. So I ended up... Um, joining it i paid the money to join and i'm trying to recruit people i would leave comment i'm one of i was one of those annoying people that would go onto videos and then just be like yeah if you want to learn how to make 200 dollars a day email me at this email and i would send that i'm um, trying to get people to um join it i eventually ended up leaving the mlm and um i 
I still was really interested in foreign exchange because like sometimes I would trade it's really risky I will say that right now I'm not saying go into foreign exchange if you want to invest make sure you consult a, a financial advisor um, this is just my personal experience but um, I was really interested in foreign exchange because I could see that like you can make a lot of money but I realized you can also lose a lot of money but the way that I am and I think I get it from my mom is I'm very risky I like to take risk sometimes it's to my demise sometimes it's to my benefit but i like to take risks so i continued to dabble in foreign exchange didn't really educate myself on it i educated a little bit but not that much um, and i would do it i'm doing it um, i bought signals and everything and i'm trying to use it but i'm not using the proper risk management and stuff like that so i remember um at that time when i really got into the foreign exchange I didn't really have a job at the time because I ended up leaving the job that I was with um, and I was getting about well I was getting money from my mom let's just say don't tell her I'm telling you this but I was getting money from my mom and um, what I used to do is that I would use some of it for my my expenses like bus fare phone bill and stuff and then I would put some into the foreign exchange market to invest it and also because it was such a like it wasn't that, it wasn't that, it was a couple hundred dollars but um since it wasn't that much what i would also do is i would use my credit card and then i would put money into the foreign exchange market and then do that so um i think when it really got deep for me was um i just remember there was one time um where i put i, I had funded my account for maybe about five hundred dollars and I remember um, I was investing in the market and I'm just watching it go up. It went from 500 to 1,000. It went from 1,000 to 2,000. 2,000 to 4,000. I'm like, wow, should I close it? Or like, I think it's gonna go higher. So let me just wait it out and see. Went 4,000 to 6,000. 6,000 to 8,000. 8,000 to 10,000. Most normal people who went from $500 would have closed it off from since they got $1,000. But no, me being greedy decided that I'm going to keep it open. I'm going to wait it out. And I'm going to wait until it hits $15,000 or $20,000. And I'm going to be stinking rich. That was my mentality. So I kept it open. Mind you, I stayed up all night to watch the whole thing, make it, make sure that nothing happened, nothing went in the opposite direction, that I'm not losing money, not losing my whole account. Um, I waited for the entire time. It was going up. Then by that time I got a job. It was a, a really part, it was a, a part-time job. Got a job and um, I had to go to work. And at the job that I worked, when you the only time you can check your phone is when you're on break or if you go and sneak to the bathroom. So I'm working, 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 working. Go back for my break and guess what? All the money's gone. All 10,000, including my $500 that I put into it, all gone, poof, negative. You, you can imagine my heart my heart I think my heart left my, my chest that day it came back since then but it left my chest that day but um and I just remember I used to like use my credit card to fund that account as well and I remember at the time I was also going to school I remember I put my OSAP money which is um our it's uh, our student loan basically I put my OSAP money which was intended to pay my um school fees I put that into the market and lost it so, I'm in debt for my credit card, uh, more than one credit card, I had two credit cards at the time. Actually no, so I'm in debt for my credit card, I'm in debt for my school, and then I'm like, you know what, I'm done with this, I'm not going to be doing this anymore. I'm like, let me just do something smart. And I'm like, let me get one of those credit cards where you do the balance transfer, um, where you pay 0% interest for 12 months, and um, I'll just pay it off with no interest on it. And I'm just gonna be the smarty pants that I am. So I went and got the new credit card. And they don't just pay the credit card directly or whatever you owe. 
But what they do is they give you the credit card and then they expect you to use that money that's on top of the credit card to transfer it over to the proper credit card. But what did I do? I went and go put it back into the market as well and lost it. Uh, so I'm in debt for two credit cards now. I'm in debt for school. And um, yeah, so I got sent to collections for school, got sent to collections for um, the credit card that I used to do the balance transfer. And then that other credit card that I used, they closed it, they wouldn't renew it, but they didn't send it to collections, they kept it internally. So now I'm thousands of dollars in debt. What do I do? Um, what do I do? So I, I kind of, I left it for a while. I was kind of ignoring the debt, didn't bother with it. If I got money, I'm spending it on whatever I want to. I'm not buy, I'm not paying off that debt. It's just gonna be there and I don't care. So um, I ended up doing that for a couple of months. I think I did it for almost a year. Um, and then I ended up saying, okay, you know what? Enough is enough. I can't live like this. I felt like I was constantly running from something. And it was my debt, I know, but I just felt like there was always something looming over my head that I can't be fully free because I know at the back of my mind, every time I spend my money, I, I'm owing someone else. So I think um, it was February, 20 February 2018 I said enough is enough I, I can't do this anymore um, I, I'm not doing this anymore so um, by that time I had already left the, that job where um, that made me lose the money let's just call it the job that made me lose my money um, and uh, I ended up I, I was jobless so I went and found a job at a collection agency which you can see um, in uh, which I talk about in that video that I speak about how to um, how to how to deal with collection so I talk about it's the same company that I talk about in my video where um, I talk about how to deal with collections um, so I started working at that collection agency which is kind of ironic I'm in collections while working at a collection agency but i got the job at the collection agency because you could also get commission i never hit the target to get commission they gave me all the the the, the um crappy companies where there was barely any commission nobody cares to pay for it it was like phone companies and stuff like that so people didn't care it didn't really affect their credit um but whatever um but uh yeah so i um worked at the collection agency and i'm like I'm going to use this money that I get from the collection agency. I'm going to work hard and I'm going to pay off the money. So what I did is I used the tactics that I learned, um, like just the inside knowledge that I learned about collection agencies while working there in order to um, get rid of that debt that I had. So uh, for the collection agencies that um, I owed money to, I just called them up. I'm like, hey, I want to pay you your money um, and uh, like I, I want to negotiate something with you guys. So they gave me a negotiation. Um, I told them uh, I can pay it in two installments um, within these two date frames. Uh, I'll give you your first payment on this date and first payment, second payment on this date, and then I need a letter. So um, they agreed to that. So I ended up paying it off in two installments for one of the debts. Then I called the other company asking for the, my school debt, asking if we can negotiate. They said they can't because it's for school fees. There wasn't much interest on it either. So I ended up paying that off as well. And then I paid off the credit card as well. So I made sure I paid it off. I paid them all off within three months. Um, got it done. Really disciplined. I sacrificed. I think I didn't even spend any money on myself for my paycheck unless it was like bus fare or anything like that but I just made sure I kept all my expenses low I didn't um, buy anything unnecessarily no shopping sprees nothing like that but I just stuck strictly to I'm going to get this debt paid off and I'm going to get it done quickly I'm not dealing with this anymore um, so I did that and then I started saving and stuff like that um, and I didn't really know I said I'm not going to be investing um, for right now I'm just going to relax on that because that's kind of what got me into debt because I wasn't doing it properly I was just being really risky and putting money that I can't afford to lose into it so um, I was just saving money um, eventually got back a credit card to build back up my credit um, and in my mind I said um, I set a goal for myself. I think it was within two years I said I wanted to start investing again. I said within five years I wanted to start my own business. And I said within uh, 
I think by the time I turned 30, I wanted to start my rental property business. But guess what? Everything got done in reverse. I don't know what happened there. Um, but uh, we ended up starting our rental property business in 2019. Um, which I'm so happy for. Um, so we started a rental property business in 2019 and that opportunity just popped up. Um, and it was mainly like my sister like pushing ahead um, and we got that business. So got that in 2019. Um, I started investing again in end of 2019 and uh, end of 20, so like maybe December 2019 um, into 2020, uh, got into the stock market during the pandemic, which it has helped a lot um, and then as well as we have this business here which we started back up again so um, that's basically the conclusion of my whole financial journey and I'm just really dedicated to just continually learning and improving um, I'm constantly just looking at how I can improve myself how I can learn more about investing how I can be a better investor as well as how I can share that knowledge because I know be I got myself into trouble because of a lack of knowledge so I wanted to share my knowledge with other people as well um, and make these videos for you guys So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video um, If you are new and you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button We drop financial videos every single Friday um, Our financial Friday videos as well as if you aren't a part of our financial group on Facebook Make sure you go to our financial group the link will be in the bio as well as if you don't want to click the link you can go to facebook.com slash NV finance uh, financial sorry NV financial and uh, you'll see all the resources there um, as well as uh, make sure you hit the like button it helps us out a lot helps other people to see our videos as well as comment down below um, your financial journey which part of your financial journey you're on or any story you want to share about your financial um, progress as well um, we'd love to hear from you as well and you can also check out our play playlist for um, our financial videos if you want to learn more about finances we so so appreciate you and i hope you have a wonderful day we love you and have a good day bye